Hi and welcome back to a new video. Yesterday I did a poll on the German channel to figure out which video the people want to see today. And the result was that about two thirds would like to see my very obscure water cooling unit. And if I would tell you that this is a water cooler, or like a water cooler, you would probably think that I kind of lost my mind, but I was also, when I ordered this, I was like, the fuck is this? Today's video will be about the Sunnen, Sunon, I don't know what turbo. <laughs> it's also a very nice uh, product name. And as you can see, it states liquid circulation inside. If we check some of the specs on the product packaging, it states 130 watt highly efficient cooler. And down here, it also states that this device outperforms traditional devices by about five to 10 degrees Celsius. That's a quite big claim. And now if we look at the back, that's like, I don't know, I have never seen something, something like this before, but this shows how the cooler is built inside. It's like a cut view. On the bottom, the CPU, and then we have some kind of cold plate, like a copper cold plate. And then we have a water circulation inside, surrounded by aluminum fins and a fan on top. Now, if you look at this cooler, this looks like any ordinary boxed cooling fan, like an older AM2 cooler maybe. Turn it around, you can see this copper contact surface, nothing unusual, some aluminum fins on the side, a big fan on top. But if we believe what's written on the product packaging, the fan is not only a fan, but at the same time, it's supposed to be a pump, which is really obscure. And like underneath here, we should have some water, which means that the CPU would dissipate the heat to this copper base, and then the water will transfer the heat to the aluminum fins. The very interesting thing about this cooler is the price. I paid about $18. Well, I had to pay an additional $20 shipping, which is a bit unfortunate, but that will depend on the location. Other than that, I mean, the price performance could be quite interesting. That's why we will compare it with the Intel box cooler. This is the recent one, which is included, I think, with the i3 and i5 CPUs. We will test this on a 12400F already mounted in the socket. And then I have a third cooler, which I had laying around for, I don't know how many weeks and months. This is a golden field CPU cooler. Reminds me of some like turbocharger, also quite obscure design. Fairly cheap, about 30 euro. And then we will also probably add some AIOs to the comparison. One more thing I would like to add is that this cooler is actually like 16 or 17 years old, which means that it's obviously not compatible officially with socket 1700, which means that we will have to figure out a solution to make this compatible to a recent motherboard. We quickly went to Grizzly because we have some tools here to rework the mounting frame, which is actually socket F. I'm not quite sure why this is the case, but for this mounting bracket, they added these things on the side. Not sure why they are there, but it's quite fortunate because it's the perfect dimension to add holes for socket 1200. Either that is like one of the hardest materials I ever drilled, but I think the drill bit is just at the end of its life. It was indeed a very hard material. Still managed to drill four new holes, grabbed some new screws and nuts, which means we will go back home, mount the cooler. Looks much better than I expected. Looks almost like officially included. The good thing is these coolers are so cheap that it's no problem to just buy two of them, which means that we can take apart one of them. And even if we break something, if we damage something, I will still have a functional piece. By the way, just as additional information, the room temperature right here is about 26 to 27 degrees Celsius right now, just for you as information when we will later do temperature testing. But first we will start with the boxed cooler configuration. Even though the 12400F is running complete stock, it still draws about 80 watt in Cinebench R20. You can see CPU is clocking at 4 gigahertz on all of the cores, that's completely stock. But you can see the peak temperature is in the lower 80s. During gaming, the load is obviously quite a lot lower. Still, you can definitely hear the fan spinning. Temperature wise, we are usually between like 65 or 75 degree Celsius. Time to check how well the Vaturbo will perform. 
Will this count as an AIO? I'm not quite sure about that. But technically speaking, it has the same kind of components. We have a cold plate made of copper, we have water in between that's dissipating the heat to the aluminium fins, we have a pump sitting inside, at least in theory. We will definitely take it apart later, but yeah. I'm still very curious what kind of thermal performance we can expect from this thing. To be honest, I expected this thing to be much worse. I'm positively surprised. It's not even that bad. Subjectively speaking, the noise level could be almost the same. Right now it feels like this cooler is slightly more noisy, but yeah, not bad at all. The temperatures seem to be like 5 degrees Celsius lower. Now we are running a remnant from the ashes again, but I meanwhile normalized the noise level to make sure that both hit exactly the same noise level. I measured the intercooler with 44 dBA and now I also set the Vaturbo to also have 44 dBA. And you can see a clear indication of temperature. Previously we had about 65 to 75 degrees Celsius, whereas now we can see temperatures of about 55 to 60 degrees Celsius. You can already see that they used like security torques. So you're not supposed to open this usually. And I'm wondering like how full this is, if it will instantly leak some water or what we will find inside. This is extremely interesting. It indeed looks like a water block from 10 years ago and these type of water blocks didn't even perform bad. Like you had the, I don't know, like intake like the flow directly on the center with a bit of structure, like those blocks were not bad at all. The fluid inside also is quite strange. For sure this is not pure water. It could be some kind of coolant or liquid you use in like car radiators because it kind of smells the same. And the color also indicates that it's like not clear or pure water. But also if we look at the structure, we see no corrosion at all. And con considering that this is like 10 years old, the color of the fluid is definitely not caused by corrosion, so pretty sure that's exactly how it's intended to be. Yeah, so definitely some kind of automotive coolant. I'm also very interested in the impeller design or like the pump design, which means that we will have to remove the fluid. Now you can also clearly see if I spin the fan, it rotates the impeller which means that it's indeed like a, a fan pump combination all in one thing. I'm just wondering how they did it technically. I already um, I kind of expected this to be one part. Seems to be not the case. <laughs> this is so obscure. I think with these notches on the bottom I should be able to remove the entire thing. I was just wondering if this is a simple magnet coupling, because if you inspect the fan further, you will notice it's an ordinary fan, but the, like the, I don't know, rod in the center is a bit extended, and then we have a magnet on here, which means that if we remove this, probably, so that's our pump impeller, as you can see, and like there's no connection to the outside, which means that if we put it on here, and spin this. Yeah. It's very simple, yet brilliant. It's a solution that is cheap to manufacture and should be very reliable. Now if you look at the impeller, you can definitely see that it's bent to a certain degree, which makes sense because you want to have some kind of flow inside. It will also rotate in this direction. And since it's directly connected to the fan, it will also be paired to the fan speed, which means the higher your fan will rotate, the higher the pump speed will be. But if you compare this to like an ordinary water cooling solution, if we go back to our cooling plate, the water will typically be pointed towards the center directly. Whereas on this solution, you will have to think about that the impeller comes from like the top, somewhere like this. So it will not directly flow to the center. It will more be like a rotating fluid in here. That's why I'm wondering why they picked this like pyramid shape. Hmm. Very, very interesting. 
I think it's time to compare this with like two or three more different cooling units to see on what kind of performance level we are here. That's why I will also quickly include this turbocharger CPU cooler. However, the mounting mechanism is not that great. So you have these brackets on here and then you will have to use these like thumb screws to mount it from the back of the mainboard. So not the most convenient mounting solution. Perfect in combination with high memory modules. Great. And even the smaller Vengeance modules couldn't be like three millimeters higher. That wouldn't work. Not sure if I will become friends with this cooler. Highly doubt it. In that case, pretty much no other option than removing the entire plastic ring that is surrounding the cooler and also get rid of RGB at the same time. Oops. I'm not sure what to think about this. I mean, the cooler itself looks quite nice without the plastic shield, but then without the plastic ring, the fan on top looks a bit ridiculous. But hey, on the other hand, we were able to go back to the taller memory modules. But now finally time to take a look at temperature testing results. And we will start with Cinebench R20, noise normalized at 44 dBA. On top we can see the Deepcool Assassin 3 used with a single fan and you can see because this is also a high-end air cooling unit it has about 55 degree Celsius peak. Then the Golden Field Engine CPU cooler 10 degree worse and in this regard our Watt Turbo cooler is not even that bad, it's like 4 to 5 degrees Celsius worse. And then right on the bottom, Intel Laminar RM1, 83 degrees Celsius. And looking at the gaming results, you will notice that the Deepcool Assassin 3 is not much colder than with higher load, simply because it's a very potent air cooler, peaks out at 51 degrees Celsius, and then the Golden Field and the Watt Turbo are very close together, about 3 degrees Celsius difference and the Intel Laminar is still 72 degrees Celsius. Talking about the Golden Field engine cooler first, I would probably agree with the Amazon review, which I really liked that said, looks cool, doesn't cool. And I think that's exactly the case. If I remember correctly, I paid about 50 euro for this thing, which is definitely too much considering how many compatibility issues you potentially will have, especially like on the mainboard side and also on the memory side maybe. And then the cooling performance is also not that great. We don't have to talk about the Deepcool Assassin 3. We all know that it's a very good air cooling unit. But let's talk about the Sunon Vaturbo. Sunon? I don't know how to say it. But from an engineering perspective, it's very well built. Like the copper base, you have this like rotor inside with the magnetic coupling, which should be very reliable. We had a very good fluid inside, at least this is like probably 12 years old and there's no corrosion inside, which is a very good indicator. On the other hand, it doesn't have a lot of surface area. It's still based on technology from like 15 years ago, which you can clearly see. So it would need a definite update, like adding heat pipes, like adding very fine fins, maybe copper fins. Then this could have potential. But I'm not quite sure if it would be worth following this way. Like, yeah. If you would build this nowadays with the like increased costs you have on everything, it would probably be much more expensive and then probably not be competitive to any kind of modern heat pipe cooler. I still find it very impressive that they made this and like you cannot find anything about this anywhere, which is also quite interesting. What is not really interesting though is the Intel box cooler. I just don't get it sometimes. I mean, this is 13 euro here. And considering the cost, like the performance should be so much better and also the noise level is just way too high. Like this one, yeah, cannot recommend. But the rest was quite interesting. I hope you also find it interesting. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time. Bye bye.